Happy September 6th, 2020. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And on today's show, we have the running back for the Woodland Hawks, Jason Palmieri. Jason, it's great to have you on, man. Thank you. It's good to be here. You know, Jason, I think, you know, usually I like to ask about the players, how they start playing their sport, if it's football, baseball, basketball, etc. But I think we're under a certain time right now, or we are in a certain time, where news broke a couple days ago about high school football not happening, at least Again, potentially not for 2020 and not for 2021. I know there's protests happening today at West Hartford at Blueback Square. I know Wednesday there's a protest happening down at the Capitol building in Hartford. But, you know, this is about you, man. Just kind of, you have the floor. Just tell me about how are you feeling emotionally, the team, everything. All right. So really when the news got broke to us, we were all in school. So... Um, one minute I was, I was in school, I was learning and I was doing my thing, but then the next minute I was looking at my phone and I see on Twitter and, uh, I see fall season is canceled for football. And then everyone's texting on our group chat saying, Oh my God, is it actually canceled? So I end up calling, um, coach Mafo and he, he says, yeah, it's, that's, it's been officially canceled. And then I just thought that that was wrong to do of the CIAC and the health department break into us like that. I mean, if anything, I, I would hope that the coaches would have broke it to us before anybody not to find out in school. Cause we were all heartbroken in school really. Now with you finding out in school, cause I know some schools started off this past week. I know in Waterbury, they start this coming week and I know it's kind of, I don't know if there's any right way to break the news as far yeah. as at the time, but I will admit to you, I think you're right. The fact that they waited so long and they dragged you guys through the mud for months. It, I almost feel like they knew all along that there wasn't going to be football. But then why give you guys so much hope? You know, why put you guys through all of the workouts, all of the, oh, here's the carrot. Here's the carrot. You might yeah. play football. You know what I mean? And then they just, what, how many times? Two, three times they took it away? I just don't think yeah. they it was ridiculous. really throughout the whole summer. We no one even knew really if it was going to be a season or not. We we all were told just practice like there's going to be a season, act like there's going to be a season, and then we'll see what happens. And then once we keep going on and we hear nothing that the season's still going on, we all we all think that oh, this we're going to, we're finally going to have a season. So it's going to be a shortened schedule or whatever, but still going to have a season. And then just they finally break it to us after months of just dragging us through it. How was the mental side for you and the rest of the team? Because as we alluded to earlier, the back and forth of football, no football, football, no football, uh, practice. Oh, no, you can't practice. You can only do cohorts of 10. You can only weight lift, et cetera. How, how was it? Because I know the mental side is something I've really been talking about a lot because I know with the back and forth and being told one thing and then being basically depressed for another, I know how much it can really affect the, you know, the brain and the mindset. So really, I I thought our team actually adapted pretty well to the um, to the circumstances that we had to be under. So really, we had cohort to ten, like you said, and for a while it took a little getting used to. I mean, we couldn't even see each other in practice. We had to have our mask on the whole time, and then we couldn't even do the normal things that we've been used to be doing. But after a week or so, I mean, I thought our team handled it pretty well, and we were. We were acting like there's going to be a season. We were acting like, like, let's do this. Let's get through this. And then we'll eventually be able to practice normal. We'll eventually have a season. And I thought that we, we were mentally pushing ourselves to, we were mentally pushing ourselves to prepare for a season. And I just thought that once they broke it to us, it just, it really just tore us apart. I think that's really mature kind of how you're looking at it. And I do give a lot of credit because I think you would as well to Coach Mafo for what he's been able to do. I know I've broadcasted quite a few of your games over the last few years, and I've had an opportunity to interview and talk to Coach Mafo on numerous occasions. And I can tell you, he's probably one of the most, he, he tells you straight up how it is. He doesn't lie to your face, you know, and he's, he, he's one of those coaches that I think you want to have in your foxhole. Am I wrong? Yeah, for sure. Coach Mafo is such a good, not only coach, but a mentor and kind of like, he does everything for us. And at, in football, out of football, he's really just a, a good person to be around. 
what did what was he like? Because I can only imagine. I know the players. I can only imagine what you guys were going through. Coaches from the number of coaches I have talked to, some have told me they haven't slept during this whole. And th- I'm talking about months. They haven't really been sleeping much because th- you know they're trying to plan one thing. And then the DPH and the CIAC throws out more restrictions, so they have to rejig, you know, rejigger their, you know, how they're going to be able to get you guys prepared for what was potentially a season. So how is he dealing with all this? He, so really the whole time we didn't, we never we lifted, we never did anything because we knew. I mean, we we never really knew what the CIAC was going to allow us to do, what they weren't going to allow us to do. So we were all in our ten groups, of ten or our groups of ten, and then. We all just did our own thing, and I think Coach Maffo and all, all the coaches really handled it well. They made us have our have on our mask, social distance. We were doing all the precautions that needed to be taken to have it taken to be have a season, but it's just like we none of us really ever knew what was going to happen. None of us ever knew if there was going to be more restrictions put out, less tr- restrictions. I mean, it was all just kind of let's do this and then wait for tomorrow to see what we got to do tomorrow. I want to go back to the part where you said where you were at school. Was it was it difficult to focus on school only because up until you got the the tweet, the text, whatever about there not being football? I, I'm sure you went into school like, is today going to be the day? Am I going to hear football or no football? I mean, tell me about it. I mean, so going into school day, I I never really thought anything of it because okay. throughout the whole summer, I've been I've been hearing news. I've been hearing rumors. Oh, the season canceled. The season so on. So I really wasn't phased by it because I they've been doing this to us for months. And then once I finally heard the news, I I could not focus mentally throughout the school day. Uh, really, the second half of the school day was like, damn, I really don't have a season. <laughs> like I really couldn't focus mentally. I can only imagine how you know I was able to talk to a couple seniors yesterday. You know, from Naugatuck and from Danbury. And, you know, they're heartbroken. I could just tell by the way that they were speaking. Just they left it all out. And I know you still have an opportunity. I think, well, you're only a junior, correct? Yeah. So you have an extra year. But still, this is a very important year for you because as a junior, you're trying to lay the foundation for here's some tape. Here's what I can do. I can ball out. But I want to keep going because you want to build on that. And not being able to do that, it, it really sucks for the juniors. Yeah, I mean, especially for the seniors, really, like, a lot of these kids are never going to play football again. Like, that's it. Just That's broken to them just like that. You're never going to play football again. And it's it's really sad to hear that. But and for, our, for us juniors, yeah, we have another year, and it's not as bad for us. But some of us that want to play football in college just want to take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. It's it's difficult because now just that our most – really our most important year taken away – and it's just it sucks really but especially for the seniors i mean i feel horrible for them all all across the state is there is there one particular question or two questions that you have that if you do go to the rally on wednesday that you want to have answered because i've asked a lot of people and they all have questions and i'm sure you have a couple that you want answered as well yeah really i would i would ask what changed from last month to right now about why the season was on last month and why why is it canceled now what changed in a month span or a couple weeks span about why we can't have the season now because really when you think about it i don't think much has changed and i think they knew along that in the long run i think that they just waited to break it to us i want to throw this out to you real quick because i've thrown it out to the coach at career academy and he he agrees with me do you think that the dph knew all along that they weren't going to budge, that there wasn't going to be a season, but they had you guys go through workouts because, <clears throat> pardon me, they wanted to see if cases cases would rise because then if they did, they could shut everything down and say, we told you so, you didn't listen. But on the contrary, cases went down, you guys were preparing for a season, they had egg on their face. So now they had to really be like, oh, crap, uh, no season, nope, nope, it's got to be seven on seven, which they knew all along you guys weren't going to do. Exactly. I, I totally agree with you. I could not agree more. I feel the same way. I, all along, I feel like they knew exactly that they were going to cancel the season. They were just waiting to see if cases were were going to rise because that's what they thought. But as soon as they realized that they're not going to rise, that it's not going to be what they thought it was, they, they, had to, they had to cancel. And it's a shame because I, I understand I'm not one of these conspiracy theories that say the virus isn't real. 
The virus is real. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. Trust me. I know it's real. But at the same time, if they're so concerned about the health aspect of everybody involved, they should have taken into account the mental aspect because there needs to be, because what people have gone through since this virus came about, at least at first in March and then up until now has been terrible. And I think to put you guys through all the crap that they did, including the coaches and specifically you, the players, it's not healthy. And I don't know if we're going to see something maybe next year or the year after, but this could be something that we see over five to 10 years and could affect football for a long time yeah. in Connecticut. Yeah, I mean, no, no one knows the long term, really, of what's going to happen to even winter sports with basketball. Basketball right now isn't looking good. Even spring sports... And then in, no one even knows to next year. I mean, I, I don't even think they know what's going to happen next week. Like, they, I, I have a feeling like the Department of Health and the CIC, I, I don't even think they know what's going to happen really with anything. Like, I, I know that they just canceled football, but I, they'd probably, if I had to guess, they don't have a plan for any other fall sports either. No, because, uh, you know, my girlfriend's a teacher in Waterbury. She thinks, she, you know, and I agree with her, she's going to be back within a month. So what happens when all the schools close because there's cases, which there will be, and then everything's online? Are there still going to be sports? They really haven't talked about that. Yeah. You know, it's it's strange. And again, you know, great point about the winter and spring sports. This virus is not going to get better when it goes into the winter because you have cold season. You have the flu season. People are going to get sick because it's getting cold out. But then there's going to be that confusion is it COVID? Is it not COVID? There's going to be this hypersensitivity to it, you know? Yeah. And it's, I don't know, man. And I feel terrible because you have basketball teams like Woodland who are trying to build off of what they had, I thought, a very successful season last year. And they have some pieces. You have Naugatuck. You know, there's a lot of other teams. And they miss another season. Then the spring season, this will be their second season. If I know it's a lot of ifs, but... Jeez, if, if if they're going to have it, I feel like they need to give an answer soon. You know, because yeah. they can't. They can't do what they did. What they did to us, they can't do that again. Two yes. seasons in a row. No. It's just they mentally, no one would be able to. No one would be able to bear that. No, because I don't know if they can withstand having all those coaches from the winter and spring. Because you have football coaches, rightly so, defending you guys. But if you have winter and springs coaches trying to do that, there could be a battle, a big one. Yeah. You know, but Jason, we've just about run out of time, but I really do appreciate you coming on. You know, hopefully, you know, if you do go to the rally on Wednesday, just remember, wear a mask, social distancing, peaceful protest. You know, I've seen people, yeah. I've seen people tweeting. I saw Lungarini tweeted out about, I guess people are tweeting at the DPH. and Yeah, kind of, so. yeah that's, that's not right. That is never, yeah, totally. you should never do that. But there's one thing to be peaceful about it and express your emotions, but do it in the correct way. But like I said, if you go Wednesday, just wear a mask, peaceful protesting, and hey, leave your emotions out there. I'm sure everybody else will, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem. I'll wrap things up in the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm on a journey to find them all. Have a good one, everybody, and be well.